go you can check that later okay. in the meeting Uh, I think previously for Gitpod, we used to get a link like close to our pull request, right? To open the particular pull request in Gitpod, and it would show up. Uh, I'm not able to find that now. Um, let's see. I haven't seen that. Um, let's see. Oh, did you maybe get? Did you have an extension installed or something? Because I know they have an ins extension. Uh, Oh, oh, okay. Maybe yeah, that's maybe the that's Chrome extension. Too. Yeah, okay. That, yeah, then that's the issue. Okay. Thank okay. you. Cool. This looks like it's working, So, but we'll just leave it up just to, just to double check. Because um, it's always good to uh, recheck that. Okay. So that's settled there. That's great. Nice. Okay, this will be great. That was one of the key ones we need to get done before the next release. Um, so. Me to remove default value here. And I'm just going to update the new pull request too, because he's got another one with more default values. Okay. Unfortunately, he dropped off. Um, We are recording great. Okay. I think that was that. Okay, no, how much is back? All right, okay, so great. Um, let's see. All right. Um, Okay, so, all right, now let's go through and get everybody. Um, so, Himachu, you want to go next? Since you just... Um, yeah, so I have to talk a bit about question answering model. Yeah. And then a bit about chatbots also. Uh, oh, okay. Last time, right? So, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I... Oh, I forgot to... Res maybe, did I forget to respond? I, yeah, I think I forgot to respond to the one about Hagen's thing on chatbots. Okay, so what do we want to... Yeah, so you wanted to talk about what so what do you want to talk about here? So, yeah, so one is about question answering model and this chatbot. And, and yeah, sorry, I forgot that wobble rabbit thing. Uh, I thought it got merged uh, when I was doing. And today, when you co commented, I saw, okay, I left that. I will finish. No that worries, thing. no worries. I figured you probably just you didn't see it or something. So, yeah, it happens. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. How about Agen? Yeah, uh, same. Uh, about the chatbot and uh, the PR, uh, the one which I linked, uh, how we can insert it into the database. Oh, the yeah, questions. yeah. I haven't had a chance to look at that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And then, is that it? Yes, that's it. All right, great. And then, Saksham? Uh, yes, so I want to talk about uh, image operations, uh, stuff about image operations, the directory source, 
and uh, there was an issue with config loaders so i want to talk about these three things today uh yes so that was the one that um uh was raised by um um Tutanchi, right uh, or was, i don't or is that, okay uh, Sudhanshu raised a new issue on GitHub the other day that was had to do with config loaders. Whoa, that Is it related cool. to CSV uh, source? I think that was a little to data flow. Okay, I got it. You weren't able to export something. Oh, yeah. Oh, unable to export. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see. And yeah, then there are the scikit the bugs. I haven't gotten around them, so I don't know how will that work. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's see. Let's just talk about it. So. Well, they're not as much as scikit bugs. They're just this. Uh, we are uh, we are reading the image arrays in a different way than okay. they're intended to. I think. All right. Okay, so um, uh, okay, yeah. Let me just one second here. So, like every morning, I got oh, geez, Okay, I'll be right back. Sorry. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's talk about the question answering model. Um, yeah, so I was able to do the training part, and but when I was using the accuracy and predict method, it got really really messy in TensorFlow. Mm. So then um, it's yeah, I mean I tried I spent two or three days doing that, but it got really messy and it was quite difficult. So I, I switched to PyTorch. And now it's coming along nicely so far. Okay. So, yeah, so I wanted to tell you that. All right, that's great. Clean is good. Um, so, I mean, was there any sort of specific challenges that you're having? Or? Yeah, the problem is the squad met metric. Uh, so there is a uh, particular way of uh, ch checking whether the model is performing good or not. So that mm -hmm. is a squad metric. That is uh, that is given with the data set only, so that is quite complex. So yeah. the problem using that um, is quite challenging if you use a TensorFlow. And TensorFlow is really, I mean, if we are doing everything from scratch, then it's get really dirty also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that was the problem. Cool. All right. Well, that's good. So, so it's basically due to the metric, the squad metric that they are using. Okay. Okay. Um. What, what, it's did you say squad metric? Uh, yeah. SQU ready. Because that's the data set I'm using. SQUAT? Or wait. Is that correct? Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's, uh... Actually, it's D, not T. D. Oh, squad metric. Oh, okay. I was like, squad metric. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was like, I figured I was spelling it wrong. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, what is this? Just so I understand. Okay. Okay. There we go. Now I got the correct capitalization. All right, great. Um, yeah, so this is it about question answering. So okay. I'm expecting that it will be done in one or two days. Yeah. Okay, great. Um,
So this is the one with paragraphs. Uh, yeah, that context, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, sweet. And then chatbot. So, do you want to hear what Agen has to say first about chatbot, or you want to? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let him say first. Uh, so, uh, did you do you guys remember that long message which I wrote? Yes, so, uh, I basically, did. Basically, uh, like chatbots are like uh, two kinds. One is like goal oriented, and the other one is like your casual conversation. Mm -hmm. So both of them uh, require uh, some specific data, and uh, like from what I understand, what they try to do is they have like multiple models fused together, where one model tries to find what the intent of the uh, like input is, one mm -hmm. tries to find what the context is, and like after this, they pass this message to some backend, and uh, like whatever you want to do with that data, you do it in backend and just report it back. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. Um, so, so like, uh, doing this thing is like, uh, usually like, it's like very long and requires like, so, uh, the models are easy, but uh, collecting the data is pretty painful so, because you have to like hard code the whole stuff. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So, um, we're just going to make it, make it, you know, we're going to make this more simple, right. And do something that's like a more traditional chatbot then. Because um, I still think the chatbot is sort of a, um, yeah, I still think the chatbot is like is most like chatbots are not like a super smart. It's yeah, like they don't have to a... do a bunch of machine learning like on NLP. They could do, you know, you could be like um, some smart. Yeah, we, engine. yeah. Uh, what kind of chatbot are we? Planning? We could do. I mean, so the point here is to show the conf how you configure the, you know, the configuration parameters. Um, um, and also sort of like something that's a real world right away useful example to people is like if you can the chatbot I like the chatbot example because you know if we could you know basically if you wanted to demo something and you yeah, you had a little operation to hook it up to Gitter then you could instantly demo it to our whole team right um, so um, so if you could just do something like you know on this command right because usually we do something so like you know at chatbot um, how's it going, Yesh? Chatbot. Um, and then you'd say, like, um, you know, calc, or let's see, like, we could do something like, um, you know, like, what is that one? Um, maybe it's just, uh, yeah, maybe it's sort of like keyword and then input variables or something. So it could be, you know, like salary or estimate salary. And then we say, you know, um, what, what was that? Years, you know, that common example we do. Years to expertise, um, you know, four or five, trust, 0 0.4. And then, you know, chatbot reads this as um you know the first colon separator is the thing to do the next one's this value this value this value right um and then we you know pump that into a model and and it you know spits out the output right um so now you have an example where you're showing how to do configuration and how to use prediction in a model you know and so now people can basically take this and you know demo their demo demo their trained models quickly, right? Okay. Um, okay, uh, this should be fairly simple. Okay, cool. It's straightforward. Great, great. Okay. How's it going, Sudhanshu? Okay, so let's see. Um, yeah, because that's the yeah, point here, right? if this is the use case, then uh, it will be easier. And... Yeah, it's still, uh, yeah, if this is the like use case, then I don't think CLI it will be easier. Integrated with chatbot stuff, right? What? Sorry, let's go. Agen this will be more here. like the CLI interface integrated with the chatbot. Exactly. Basically, what you're gonna do is you you just yeah you you basically what well, you the chatbot is just like you know, it's 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 just 
that's that's the whole idea here is, is we're just like okay what's the yeah. the input mechanism for stuff is abstracted and then the data flow tells you how do you actually yes. get things executed so. i mean like the other chatbots also does the same thing it's just that uh, they they on structure data and yeah exactly model, so we'll just make the yeah exactly so if you had an nlp model or several nlp NLP models capable of doing that stuff, you could take unstructured data and convert it into the structured data and then pass yes. it in, right? So it's, yeah. you, you know, it's all, at that point though, then it's all just about, you know, linking, you have, once you have the model, you just link it together in this, what, you know, you know, using this data flow as a starting point, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I was like pretty disappointed after I read the board, Alexa and all this. I thought these things were super smart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like once you know how they are working, like yeah, you it's kind like, of feel them. Oh, uh, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, but it makes sense though. It's like okay, yeah, that's. I mean, that's how. That's like yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Like, so the whole stuff is hard coded. Like when you say <laughs> you the directions, like it find out from to it kind of fills the stock and makes it into a tape which and pass pass yeah whatever back in there. So. Oh jeez. <laughs> Okay, so example chatbot this may tell you so uh thing to do um variable Okay. Yeah, and this is another one where you can probably just take, um, you know, just just have a single Python file, and then you know, so we'll we'll write the we'll write the so write the um, let's see write the um, let's see does it have an API? Let's see. I think we should probably just do IRC. Uh, or let's see, Gitter. I think we should probably do IRC because Gitter has this IRC bridge and then it works for everybody with, um, no, that's not what I want. Damn it. Um, yeah, I feel like, I just know they also have these OAuth accounts, so. Just don't want it to come through. Let's see. Okay, so this guy's actually got. Uh, hmm. All right. Well, we'll figure it out. Um. I feel like there would be more. Yeah, I Google it on for bit. like how to configure yeah. this thing. Yeah. Cool. So what is this? This looks cool. Um, okay, so, all right, so, yeah, so the operation to connect to, um, so the operation will connect, so the operation, so, right, an operation that connects to Gitter, ideally via IRC API. Um, yeah, so ideally via the IRC API, which is irc.gitter.im, which hopefully, okay, good, now. Yeah, I didn't show you my little token. <laughs> um, so that would be on the recording then. Um, let's see, so yeah, you basically go here and then it gives you this token. And so that way, um, you know, that would be ideal because then people who have IRC servers can just connect it to their IRC server or to Gitter. Um, uh, so, 
if, but that, if that's not possible, that's fine. Um, so this operation should be in a, a you know operations slash IRC or something, um, and it should be in asynchronous. Or let's see. Yeah, I mean this thing. Let's see. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. Um, I mean, ideally, this thing is a asynchronous iterator that can sort of say, like, this was either a message to the channel or a message to itself. Or, well, no, it just it should just like yield every single method message, and then you know you can forward that to another operation, and that can decide what to do with it. So, uh, asynchronous. Iterator operation that yields every message to channel. Um, and that way, you know, you just forward it to the next operation, it decides what to do with there. Um, yeah. Um, and then the rest of the operations, so. So this one should be right in operations IRC, but none of the rest ones are going to be specific to IRC, really. So you should uh, rest of operations for this demo should just be should be in single file similar to um, so or let's see the parsing you know the string parsing string parsing operation for this demo should be in single file similar to ffmpeg um, and then you know you link just to the to the uh, so yeah you should have three operations right basically you got one that connects up and yields things the next one that parses the string if it matches you know then it it returns you know the the outputs that were going to go to the um, that would be used as the feature data right and then you just send the feature data outputs to model predict and then you send that I guess you have to have another operation that yeah. is connecting up. Um, okay, that brings up an issue. Um, so now you have to have an operation that is um, waiting. Back to yeah, you have to have another operation that's also connected to Gitter. Um, so, and this brings up that there's this operation or this issue that's open called system local resource management, and this is what this is about. Um, it's basically like sometimes you have. So right within the scope of an operation, we've got um, we've got. Um, okay, wait, I gotta close this one. Out. So within the scope of an operation, we have like what we do on. Should I operation should be good or wait no um, oh we hadn't finished merging that oh well I think they still show. So behind on everything. Uh, let's see. Where's the pipeline operations? Anyway, so basically, we can do this stuff where we like. Uh, well, where's that one? Where's that one? It was just the other day. No, oh, that was the database stuff. Well, this is an okay example. All right. So basically, like you know, we can do when we the the because we do the double the operations are really double context entry two classes but the decorator just creates two two classes that wrap a function um, so um, well where's the one that's the best uh, yeah there's an even better example of this um, so auth the auth one So this is an operation implementation context, and this is a method that doesn't really matter. This is run, and so usually when you use the op decorator, that's where it just puts this, the, you know, it just push the, puts the function within this function or within this method, and then this is the main operation implementation. So this is the context. This is the run method of the context. This is where when you wrap 
something with op, it goes in here. And then this is the main operation implementation, which is just the thing that gets instantiated when you instantiate the data flow, right? And so for this one, um, we uh, we basically create this thread pool execution executor um, so that when we instantiate this operation, we create the thread pool. And that way, every time we create an operation context, so every time you go to use an operation, uh, context is created. Um, and uh, but every time you go to um, you know instantiate the operation for a specific data flow, then you know this guy does the a enter. So if you had an a enter here, every time you went to run right before you ran the operation, you could have you know an a enter and an a exit around what would happen before and after the run. Um, so so the thing is that what we ideally need to have here is. Um, some way of having that Gitter, um, that connection to Gitter, be um, like be at some level where like it, it really needs to be something that could be initialized here in A enter, but then like set within something that's accessible to all the operations running in this op, uh, in this orchestrator context. Um, actually, this is actually way easier than I thought it was. Um, we just need to add this like okay this is what we need to do we have you know we have all the we have the redundancy checker the input network context or the input network the operation network and the operation implementation network and the lock network we can probably just add another one there um, and then pass it through here um, I think that works um, but basically, it would just be like sort of like almost like a you know just a dictionary that everything within a data flow, any operation within a data flow can access. Uh, this is uh, this is not ideal. This is I don't know. The thing is, we only want one connection to Gitter, right? It is almost better. Actually, it's almost better to have the operation that's yielding responses also waiting for inputs to send back to Gitter. Um, because it should be able to do, it should be able to listen for new. We need a way, I think we probably need a way for the input network to have like, you know, subscription. Can we use run data flow instead that uh, does that work? What? Uh, we have run data flow, right? Can we use that operation? Does that work? Uh, which, this one? which operation? Which operation? Wait, what are like, you talking uh, about? Uh, can we uh, can we use the run op data flow function inside this function so that it waits for that? Does it work like that? Um, let's see. Does it work like that? Um, okay. Um. Um. Okay, no, I don't think it works like that, but I think this might be sort of similar to the input forwarding um, that you already did, right? So with input forwarding, we were looking at a subflow, right? But you can probably, like, I think where you, what, right? So yeah, so I guess, yes, I guess, yes, yeah. So what you did with run data flow, where when you run the data flow and you register it as a subflow, you can, you know, then it forwards you any applicable inputs. Um, in this case, we want to sort of not forward, but like, you know, also receive, right? Um, so it probably has something mm -hmm. to do. Um, why is what? Okay. Um, yeah, it's 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 probably something similar to forwarding, um, because what we're gonna end up with is something that's like um, what we're gonna gonna end up with is basically like a loop within this operation. Um, so the operation is going to look something like, uh, let's see, where is it good? Like, uh, didn't we do something similar for database, like uh, the, the config initializes the connection, then all the operations use those? Yeah, the config initializes the connection, or well, for the database. Um, let's see. All the database operations called, like, have a context which already has a connection and just calls that context and 
Yeah, okay. So, but the thing with that was that, um, the thing with that is that if you have multiple database operations within, this is another, yeah. So the thing with that was that if you had multiple oper database operations within the same data flow, if you didn't initialize them from Python, you couldn't point them at the same database object, right? Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, because if you did, um, if you did, uh, let's see. Actually, I think how much we might have run into this. Uh, do we have multiple in one thing? Yeah, DB query, no. I think these are all just single operations. Uh, or this one might have. Yeah, lookup might have run. Let's see now. It just runs in order. Yeah, see, the thing is, all of these can use the same one because it was instant, like it's actually instantiated up here. Uh, or where? Where did it go? Uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, we actually like instantiate this actual light database object. Um, and we need some sort of way. Like, this is another, this is, this is sort of part of. Yeah, this is sort of part of this is why I guess it, we, I went down that system local resource management path was because we really what we really need is a way for two config right so if I if I have some kind of let's see how do I explain this um, if we have two let's see let's see let's see I wonder if I can just, yeah, we we'll just write something and then it'll sort of become more clear. So yeah, these are actually a pretty good example here. So let's just copy this into a new file and then we'll, hopefully we don't hit this export issue. Um, so okay. So, so we have a database, um, and then we create, you know, some kind of data flow. Um, let's say create data flow with op. Okay, let me see what else. Um, so we're not going to actually run this, but, but you'll see what I'm talking about here. Um, so DB query, so. So, see this, right? Um, so we've got this SQLite database. Um, Diffmol service dev export. Oh my God, we're running into this error. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to go to this error first. But 
Um, all right, okay, let's just real quick, before we talk about this, we're going to talk about... Um, um, okay. Um, all right, so we also forgot. So, um, so Sudhanshu... We're going to do the same thing we did last time, and I assume you want to talk about, well, I'm just going to say we definitely want to talk about this exporting issue because that's what we're running into right now. So, data yes, flow yes. exporting issue. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Yeah, like uh, I had to ask some questions like related to SK or auto SQL. Okay. Yeah, like some minor questions like how should I go about it? Okay. Um, and yeah. then. Is that, or anything else? Yeah, no, like that's it. Okay, cool. And then Yash, um, did you have, maybe have updates on Windows? Yeah, I so? wanted to talk about the cyclic model. Okay. Like, well, I was just checking out those issues that subsume open down. Okay. Um, let's just put this. Okay. Okay, um, so okay, let me just okay, okay. Um, I just want to try to mark off things that we did talk about. Okay, um, and then let's see. So, okay, let's just look at this real quick here. Um, so this issue is what we're running into right now. Um, let's see. JSON module has no attribute blank. Okay, so it thinks that. Oh. Okay, I think we're just getting an unhelpful error message. Uh, because we renamed config loaders. Or no, we've had it. It's been that name for a while. Uh, Okay, config loader YAML JSON. MNIST, those are all pointing to the right place. Um, so it didn't find it though, is the problem. So maybe it's a config issue. Um, it might be a configuration issue. So, because what we did was, no, let's see, self.export. Oh, it is getting confused about what is. So config loader, base config loader. I think space config loader is actually, wait a minute, export, stir. Oh, that's what happened. Um, JSON config loader. Okay, it has something to do with this. Okay, so yeah, config loader, this needed to be changed. So base config loader. Because it said, I don't know what that is, and then it didn't do it or something. Okay, yeah, I think this is what we needed.
default base configurator. I think we need to instantiate that, yeah. Okay. Okay, I see. So this is a holdover from. So this is a holdover from. Um, we didn't. We maybe from when we unified the config stuff. Um, I think we just need a config here. So. You guys following what, what happened here? So basically, um, the when we unified the config stuff, I think we just forgot to um, change this parameter. Or, well, didn't we change? We changed config loader to. Yeah, change config to config loader. So maybe this commit might have missed it. Um, okay, yeah, so we'll just put this base config down here. And I think it's probably a combination of things. Attribute error, A exit. Okay, we need to instantiate it. Should be instantiated already. Um, So yeah, so we want a config loader. Config loader equals DFML config loader YAML. Um, but it's not instantiated. Shouldn't that come in instantiated? Um, or maybe it's because it doesn't have a config property either. Yeah, it's probably because it doesn't have a config property either. No. Let's see what happens if we do JSON. And what happens? Don't you have to uh, call the config loader like with base config? Um, yeah. So. In Randolph export, uh, did you? Yeah. To so, the but that's what I'm loader? saying is that we shouldn't have to do that um, because. Shouldn't we be getting an instantiated class here? Um, right. I mean, if I if I ask for if I ask for like a model here, it would give me an instantiated model, wouldn't it? Let's see. Maybe I'm not remembering how this works. Self dot model. Yeah, I should have an instantiated model. So why don't I have an instantiated config loader is sort of my question, you know. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. That seems odd. Okay. Well here's the point. Okay, we fixed this bug. But here's the and here's the point of the other thing. So when we so, uh, let's just update this too. Let's see.
Okay, we need to remove these. Okay, I see what's going on here. We probably have some things that we didn't... Oh, yeah, that was... We probably just weren't done with this yet. Um... Okay. I don't know why we're not getting an instantiated thing, but let's see. Let's sort of like, let's make a note um, when we do this. Okay, so. Um, issue with config loaders. Um, okay, data flow exporting issue. Um, so, config. in um, export command was not renamed to config loader. Um, we are unsure of why it's not giving us an instantiated config loader. Okay, um, so now back to SQLite database insertion. Okay, so I hope I didn't lose you guys here. It's worse. All right, so for example, we have this data flow, right? We said SQLite database equals you know this thing, and then we instantiated this. Well, this will work all fine as long as it's in Python. But as soon as we go to a you know serialized representation of this. Um, now we end up with basically two configs, right? Which means we're going to instantiate two different databases. Um, so we need, we really need a way for those to decide that they're the same thing. Um, so that's, that's like sort of an open question here is how do we, maybe this is just at the data flow level. Um, we say like, um, you know, we have some kind of section, we add some kind of section that's, you know, you know, shared configs or something, um, and we put them there. Um, the question is really like, yeah, um, do we, like, how do we, how do we make sure that they, they end up with the actual same instance, right? Because they need to have the same instance of this thing uh, for this to work, right? Like if we instantiate, if I ran this data flow from the command line, this wouldn't work because I'm going to open the SQLite database twice. Does that make sense? I see what's happening now. Okay. Um, so, um, let's see. So can we have like a global config and we give it a name and in these config options we just pass that name? Um, uh, global config. So that yeah, that's that's what I'm. So that's what I'm thinking here is basically we'll have you know you know shared config or or global config or something and then if you put it in here and then you reference it from configs or something then you know that that's how you would that's how you would. Um, you know, say, basically, that's, um, uh, let's see, yeah, because each one of these configs is going to have to be an actual config object. So if it ends up just being a string reference in a shared config, then that would be, let's see, so, I mean, for example, if we did... Now the issue is going to be so the issue is going to be the re the reason why this is why I hadn't tried to mess with this yet is because um, is because when you go to do this your project Augen with the Nats thing um, how do you know which one you know I, like how do you make sure that this thing you you need some more information about this now. Right, you need to know whether you can actually instantiate this thing on two different, um, like what, where this thing, where it can be scheduled. Right, if they have to be scheduled on the same machine, um, if this is sort of like a resource that's, um, you need to know whether the resource is, um, 
like whether it's something that can be used via the network fine um, by two different machines or whether it's like, you know, some kind of like, um, you know, whether this is like, uh, let's see, like, because technically it would be fine to do this on oh, the network, okay. right? Unless, yeah, yeah. like, if you had you two different machines, Yes, yes. Yeah, you have you have. There's more variables that come into it here, and so um, the questions become like, okay, um, shared configs. Um, it's almost like square config. Um, let's see. Like when we do that, like if we want, we can. Like, is there a way to? If we have a way to check those, we can use like NATS inherent stuff to pass messages if it's through multiple systems. But then we still need an information if it's local or, yeah, just like you said, we need to know that. Yeah. The issue here is that we risk breaking, like, you know, breaking what we're doing with data flows. Um, yes, yes. Because then it's like, you know, then if you start doing this config, like, you start having these just, like, networked objects everywhere, then it's like, well, should we really be doing, should, do, you know, should it really work like that? Um, um, this is sort of a larger discussion here. Um, for now, I think what we need to do is shared configs, and then, you know, if you see a reference like this, right, then you, you grab it from the shared config. Um, so, Let's make an issue to do this because um, this will be sort of um, shared fix. Um, or let's see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll just do shared config for now. Um, so let me just post this stuff up. So we need to get a move on here. I got a bunch of stuff that I gotta do. Okay. So. Just post this stuff up, and then you'll have the video too. Um, All right, so there's the problem. All right, um, so let's just write this. And let's make the system. All right, so, and then, a, is that does that all sound good, Noggin? So basically, you know, if you see shared config, then you just, um, you just map things into the same, right? So you see, you saw how the syntax works, right? Uh, yeah, so yeah, just... By the way, uh, that was not the problem with the class automating classifications. That is not the problem with automating classifications. Oh, that is not the problem with that's the problem with um, chatbots. Still, damn it. <laughs> um, wait a minute. So, yeah, that's not the problem. Yeah, that's not the problem. Um, 
right, so let's see. Um, I felt like we were so caught up last week. Uh, I didn't. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, okay. Let's before we talk about that, let's just make sure that we're going in order here, and let's talk about Whirlpool Rabbit. So, what do we need to talk about on Whirlpool Rabbit? Do we need to talk about anything, or is it just uh, basically you're gonna do it and you'd forgotten about it? Yeah, uh, uh, there is nothing much. Uh, you you have put a review there, so that's what I will just correct and make it. Uh, I'll finish that. All right, great. Um, that sounds good. All right, so and then okay, let's jump around to some other stuff first because we just spent a bunch of time on chatbot. So. Um, let's see, the data flow exporting issue, I think we just fixed that. Um, so that's good. Um, um and that was issue number 710. So service dev rename config to config uh, and then we have the open question of Seven twelve. All right. Oh, I forgot to say fixes. All right. Okay. Um, let's just start talking about um, the scikit model issues and what's going on there. So Saksham. Um, and Yash, do you guys want to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, actually, uh, with Scikit, I was looking up, uh, I was trying the MNS dataset with Scikit and another dataset, Lego dataset from Kaggle. And uh, the issue, uh, I was just thinking that we can get rid of Pandas because we are not using it that okay. effectively. Okay. So I was thinking of removing Pandas from Scikit. And uh, the other thing was, uh, if 
like for loading images every pixel is like a feature so how do we do that because when we load it from uh, the idx source and it it just puts one label in front of the whole array so mm. so you want to the the ability to make it, each pixel a feature yeah so i tried it but it's highly inefficient so is is there a direct way because um, i i tried it i just unpacked the values using a star in the scikit models but i don't think that's a problem uh well doesn't this kind of relate to how um so yeah okay so you want each each thing to be a feature um so and see. surprisingly tensorflow is working with that fine well like, so tensorflow because... works because tensorflow supports array values um whereas i think this was somewhat related to what sakshan said about how the scikit models don't support array values correctly right now yeah yeah, yeah. Um, this is related to that yeah so i mean we have two sort of options here like so one thing is we can figure out okay how do we split out that array value into you know every single thing is its own feature and i think the answer there is basically like you have a, a you know you use the data flow preprocessing source and and you and you split it out um so the other thing is um, or the other the other solution is so you you can use the data flows preprocessing source and create a data flow that basically results in every single value or every you know it, it, the exploding of that into you know like every single feature name like image zero image one image two all the way up to image you know x um, for each pixel um, in the array or we can do I mean then that may be a valuable thing to, to show how to do um, too um, or we can do um, um, you know um, fixing just fixing the, the image array stuff which probably needs to be done anyways um, so let's see um, so like but it also depends like does is that what you want specifically like do you just want it to work with arrays or do you want it really do you actually want it to be splitting them into their each value you know I, I don't think scikit supports uh, array values for other models too so shouldn't I just put this in applicable features and get rid of applicable features whatever it is doing you know yeah I so can just we want to check for array values and just unpack them where they are yeah yeah um yeah so well yeah so we shouldn't like yeah i mean this is this is something where if you see a data type right if you see a feature type because we need to get rid of applicable features right so that's another thing is is we have an open issue to get rid of applicable features um so we um so we what we could do is if you see that you can split it out you know for the user right if you see something that's basically got a length that's not one you just split it out for the user right and you make each each you know you you you, you, you just do that for them within the scikit model right um that's actually something that I think I recently did with, can't remember what it was. Um, yeah, but just this, this, yeah, this was recently done by somebody else. Um, they split it out. I think it was like the, um, what is that? Um, where is that? Um, um, where'd that go? Good grip. Um, yeah, I can't remember. But yes, we did this recently with another model. Um, so, um, so the fix should be in scikit models itself, like. Yeah, I mean, I think you might as well just say, like, if I see a feature that is, you know, an array value, mm, turn it into feature, you know index zero through index n right and and then that's how you support that with transparently right 
Yeah. So I was the other thing I was thinking was it like do we need to modify the source for this? Like should we modify the model itself or the source? Like it turns the image values into uh, the values we want, like the kind of structure we want for the data. Well, so that depends. I mean, do you think? I mean, is this like? Because we'll have to code up this fix everywhere if, if the models don't support it. Yeah, if the and models don't course. support it, right? Um, but you know, let's see. I mean, it's this is basically the case where your underlying framework doesn't support some kind of matrix value, right? That's what we're talking about here. That's like generic. Yeah, but we are sure that it will it will support non matrix values. So if we do it in source, then we wouldn't have to worry about fixing up fixing that up in the models. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think there's an argument to be made for that. I mean, we could just add an argument to source to say, you know, because right now it has what the IDX source. So so two options. Um, fix up model or change model so that if it sees a so we need we have an open issue to get rid of applicable features which basically means if if a scikit model sees that a feature has a length not equal to one it should raise an exception saying that's not supported right i mean so we're we're gonna this is this should happen now before you know before unless unless we do um so change the model so that if it sees a feature with length not equal one it explodes that into um, you know uh, feature 0 through feature n um, in this case in this case we wouldn't raise an exception um, because we now support it. Um, and then, so the other option is change the source so that it supports, um, um, so that instead of making the value a single feature it can output it as uh, multiple uh, features so this fix is very simple um so i think okay so this fix is basically just um where's that config loader demo um, use cases Oh, we merged this. Okay, so source images. It's DFFML, uh, DFFML list records. Uh, source F0 uh, to CSV and source uh, file name and load file CS. Okay. Very well, let's see.
load files, image. Yeah, okay, so. Um, Okay, there we go. So, yeah, okay, so we've got it printing. So, Vim, um, source. I mean, I think this one is, what is this? This is, oh, this is, this is just a config PNG. Oh, yeah, so with, yeah, so with, okay, so this is why, yeah, so, so with IDX, you'd, you'd have to modify each source to allow it to, to explode that, um, because the, the, this is just the CSV source at this point that was augmented to do, I think the right solution is to modify the model. Um, because the model should basically, I mean, if you, yeah, I think the right solution is to modify the model here because people aren't going to expect, like, people are going to expect to be able to feed each model the same data without modifying the source, right? We shouldn't be modifying the data source. We should be modifying the model um, so that, because if I run this with TensorFlow or I run this with Scikit, I should have the same sources command, right? Because the source of the data is the same. Right, it should be the model that's that's handling it differently, and if the model can't handle it, then we should use the data flow preprocessing source to handle it. Um, and I think that um, I mean you could use the data flow preprocessing source to explode this into into sort of like image zero through image n, um, but I think that it's probably better. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so, I'll just have to check the I'll just Yeah, so uh, this this is problematic because then we have to uh, then Different model switching between models now requires modification to the arguments to the data source, uh, which is not desired uh, way, uh, which is contrary to ideas um, right so this is contrary to like what we conceptually do here which is basically trying to you know trying to separate the data sources from the models right um, so and then the third option so and this is obviously not this is not ideal either but um, we can make uh, use if model does not support uh, arrays or auto splitting of arrays, then use data flow preprocessing source to split array value. Yeah, okay, so that's probably what you want to do here. Um, and this is deal does that questions comments concerns yeah does it sound good I or so. okay all right um and so yeah if we don't really need pandas remove it if not um i'm all for removing things um so let's see. And this is that similar to your? I mean, so Sakshan, does that basically cover what we talked about there? Uh, yes. Okay. And let's just make a note that. Um, so let's just link these issues here.
Okay, and well, I guess the answer to does GitHub work is question mark still. Was there another one? Uh, I six think nine this nine. one is not registered. Six nine nine. Yes, seven zero five is not. Okay, that is not related. Yeah. But isn't this also sort of related in that um, if you passed it, the um, I mean, isn't this have directly to do with the fact that? Wait, explain what this, I don't understand what this is then. So is, because isn't this you saying that, you know, if I passed in a, you know, uh, a, uh, you know, uh, uh, a feature with, you know, yeah, your feature but is image. If this error was produced after I um, uh, wrote the patch for uh, the uh, temporary patch in 699. Okay. So if we solve 699, then maybe this won't be a problem. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. So, oh, okay. Okay. So let's see. 699. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. So, oops. Okay. And now let's see. So, um, let's do, yeah. So let's do, um, uh, okay. Let's just finish out. Um, let's finish out auto SK learn because I think that's pretty much like, so what are the issues with that right now? Um, were you just waiting for the review? Did I hit the review button? Yes, so like uh, I actually so, wanted to ask this question like uh, how should I uh, like add models to it? Like should I add models like in a different PR or like I should add the oh, models right. in this PR as well? I mean, yeah, add one model in this PR first. Um, and then then let's add other models as separate PRs. So so for the first one, let's add a, let's add let's make sure it has one model, and then we'll we'll you know go from there, and and you can open new pull requests. Sure, sure, sure. And is that pretty much it on that one? Yeah, yeah, like that's it. Great. Uh, add one model to this PR. Merge new PRs for new models. Great. Um, okay. Uh, all right, and then so let's do image operations, directory stores. Um, so image operations, this look good. I mean, you renamed everything. So let's see. I think I just had one comment on there, which you may have addressed by now. Let's see. Um, because I just saw it again this morning. Um, oh, yeah, this, this, oh, Yash. So this is related to what Yash said. So Yash, you said that you had talked about basically there's issues with running the SH files on Windows. Um, and so you were going to read the contents and then run them, you know, as their CLI commands via Python, right? Um, was that what I was understanding from that? Yeah, so that would work on all the operating systems. So shouldn't I just replace them? Yeah, I guess you should. Yeah, you just that would be good. I mean, we probably just want a little helper function uh, to help do that then too, to save time. Um, but yeah, that's a good plan. Um, and then so basically what I was saying here is with this create data flow, um, you have two commands in one file. So let's split it into another file so that when Yash does that, um, you know, he doesn't run into this weird, uh, this one 
case that's an edge case, right? Oh. Um, and then the rest of this looks great. Um, yeah, I changed cool. uh, from uh, pillow to CV2.3. I saw that. Nice. Very cool. Very also, cool. Uh, like in this, we uh, I've added the resize operation for st uh, starting. I saw that. Yeah. And that's uh, that's a relatively easy uh, function, but for like uh, functions that are like uh, complex with uh, multiple parameters, how how will we go about that? Like like uh, something like like in our models we have configs to pass stuff um, or to pass parameters. Okay. Yeah. So you might need, yeah, it depends. So it depends on, you know, it depends on whether this is something that's ever going to be an input or whether, you know, that's sort of the way you need to, you want to think about it, right? This is a config is, is typically something that's, um, you know, a config is something that needs to be around at time of operation in, instantiation, right? So when I do, you know, when I instantiate a data flow, um, the config needs to be around, right? So like with the getter operation, you know, we clearly need you know the username or password or whatever to be in the um, in the config, right? Because it needs to be there upon instantiation. So if it needs to be there upon instantiation and it's never going to change, then that's where you you want it in the config. If you you know like, if you, there are it might change, then put it in the input. Different. Pr so yeah, what? I change. guess. I guess in in yeah. So I guess in. Yeah, so if it might if it might possibly if it ever might be something that would be, you know, at runtime, then yeah, it should be an input. Um like like uh, if uh, from person to person it will depend like what parameters they want to pass in functions. Everyone passes different parameters mm -hmm. to um, process images. So that will that Yeah, will, so then they should be inputs. Change. Right. Yes. Yeah. So we uh like there are some parameters like they are not uh they are not uh, always wanted and um, some are like oh you needed. mean like they have default values yeah default values and uh, some, or, oh some no Agen's Agen's going default values um yeah I asked Agen that yeah we had <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, because I told Dogan a while ago, like, I don't know if we want to support default values at this point. Um, so, just because, you know, the, the data flow stuff is really, there's a lot going on in there, and the more we add, the more it gets like, hmm. Um, so, so, default values. Um, so, yeah, um, So I hesitate. The reason why I'm, I'm hesitating on default values is because um, I think that I think that the fact that we're doing the permutations creates. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to interact with the permutations. Like if 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 someone's sure of how that's going to interact with the fact that we're permutating inputs, then I say go for it. Um, if we're not sure of, of how that might be, I say, if an operation has default values in the, um, you know how we're, we did the inspection, um, while well, Sudhanshu did this, I think you might have touched this too a little bit, Saksham, but when we did the inspection on the, uh, you know, the data types here, um, then, um, um, let's see, wait a minute. Uh, right. Um, okay. I think when we do, we, yeah, when we did the inspection stuff on the on the input data types, right, to determine what what it's going to be like to auto discover definitions and stuff. Um, that's where you know we would look at optional values. Um, and it would probably be something that we add to like yeah the question is so the question is the optional values have to be stored so they have to be stored some somewhere right because the core concept here is we have to decouple the 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 
the, the core concept here of the data flows is that we have to decouple the definitions and the operation, you know, the, the declaration of what the operation is from the, the implementation, right? And so as soon as now we have default values, it's kind of like, well, it's kind of like the spec. Um, so this, because the specs, do specs have default values? I think the specs might have default values. So let's see how did we handle that. Um, uh, do you guys remember where an example of this is? Um, let's see. Okay. You guys know what I'm talking about? Um, so if you have a spec for a definition, um, does it have default values? Spec field defaults. The answer is yes. Um, in which case, then that gets stored in a definition. So does it belong? Yeah, it belongs in the definition. Okay, all right, okay. So the default value belongs in the definition then. Um, um, so, okay. This is see. This is the thing. The thing is, this it becomes it becomes sort of non-trivial quickly. Um, it's not sort of just add default values. Maybe it is, and I'm just not quite thinking about it correctly. Um, but uh, then then I need I need somebody to chime in here if I'm not if I'm missing something, right? Um, but so I think if we have specs and specs have defaults, then it stands to reason that we could just have like the whole value have a default. But uh, then the question comes in like where, so it's somewhere in, in DF memory that it's somewhere in DF memory that we'll need to check. DF, it's something in gather inputs, DF, DF memory, gather inputs. Um, so, because in here, what we do is we check if we can, we you know, if we have an input for each thing, right? And obviously, okay, we're not going to do conditions, but we're just going to do inputs here, right? So we need to say, um, what else do we have on our agenda here? Because this is like, okay. All right, so I'm just making sure everyone else who's not sort of, Agen, you're still interested in what this, I'm assuming you're interested in default values, so yes. in case anybody wants to drop off, <laughs> um, I want to make sure that we've got everybody else covered here. Um, so, let's see. So, it would be in gather inputs, um, and we would basically be seeing Okay, input flow. So we go through each of the inputs in the input flow. And we check all the origins. And we check if they exist in by origin. Okay, so for item in by origin. Okay, those continues are at that for loop level. Okay, so gather input name dot append. All right, this might be pretty easy, actually. Um, if not, gather input name. Okay, so here's here's the deal. Then. Um, so if not, gather input name. So there's no data. So at this point, there's no data in the network. For an input. So we want to check if there is a default value for the parameter. And if so, oops. And if so, we want to use it. Um, if there is no default 
value, we we bail. We don't have a complete parameter set. So we bail. Um, okay. So if operation inputs input name. Okay, so this is tricky too. Um, because we need to say okay, where do we do that? Alternate definitions. Okay, so we need to go through so if alternate definitions item dot definition dot name, not in alternate definitions. Because we also need to check alternate definitions. So first we check and what level is alternate definitions defined at. Okay. Uh, there's also the case like uh, ops like if the if the parameter is optional and there is no default value in CV function two. There is no default value in what? Uh, in the CV function, like I'll take the default values from there, right, for the operation, oh, for yeah. a specific operation. So if it's a, a optional parameter and there is no default value, like it'll uh, the uh, function it's works without. None. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because if you have, I mean, if it's if it's so, you're. I mean, you're saying so. You're saying basically like, I looked at an open CV function and it says that there's an optional parameter here. Right, like in the documentation or something. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I mean, if it's if you don't have to pass it, then that means it usually means the default is none. Um, I mean, if it it's gonna tell you what the default is using inspect. Um, so if you can find an example, then then let us know and we'll do it. But it 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 is likely. I mean, if there is a, you know an equals in the declaration, right? It's gonna tell you what the it, it'll give you it'll it'll have a default value that we can use. Um, so and if not, then you know you had to, you wouldn't be able to call the function without knowing what the what the thing should be anyway. So um, alternate definitions. Okay. We're just gonna go and okay. What level is alternate definitions defined as? Okay. For origin and origins. No, I think I realized this indentation might be wrong anyways, but that is like uh, anyway, um Okay, yeah, so if not gather input name alternate definitions is origins one. Okay. Um okay, let me just make a note here. And maybe we'll just sort of post this as a diff because yeah, let's not get into this right now. I got a we got a bunch of stuff. We're all busy. Um, so basically, so check if there's a default parameter for a value. If so, use it. Um, that default might will either come from the definition. Um, uh, attached to the input uh, to input name or it will come from one of the alternate uh, definitions uh, given within the input flow for the input name. Um, and then this is basically to do, right? Actually, and that doesn't seem too bad. I think you're basically just going to need to copy um, sort of this structure of like, basically it's going to be like, you know, grab the alternate definitions here, right? And then do this check here, which this is very unhelpful because it's not actually highlighting the lines for some reason. Um, and then, you know, loop through that, um, you know, you loop through, you loop through that array here that also now includes this. So it's basically, did 
this plus alternate definitions. Um, and now, you know, for check in to check if has default, um, you know, there you go. Um, so, although now what's this going to end up with is the fact that, you know, one of these, you know, multiple of these may have a default value, um, in which case only one of them is going to get used. Um, so, and I don't know if there's really a way around that. Um, well, let's see, gather.append parameter. Well, I guess we'll append each of them, yeah. So, because we're going to make a bunch of permutations here, I think. I'm not sure. You'll find out. Um, this is the price the price that you pay for for <laughs> for wanting default values unfortunately um, I think it's I think it'll be good but uh, it's definitely not going to be you know it probably won't be the most straightforward thing you've ever done uh, but if it is great uh, yeah I'll take a look and let you know sweet um, it will definitely be interesting I give you <laughs> yeah And then we want to talk about, um, oops. Okay. So you want to default support default values for image operations. Look, my mouse is slowly diff drifting there. Uh, okay, so let's see. That's a start on that. Um, and that is that basically all you wanted to talk about with image operations, or do you have more things you want to talk about there? Uh, yeah, for uh, yeah, other thing like I have a question like if I uh, like I'll be adding like three more uh, operations to extract features, uh -huh. uh, like. I'll add, I'll add operation that they will extract features from the same image for once, uh, and then will uh, uh, then they have to merge them into a single feature vector to train on. So how will that work? So you're saying you want to do? All right, wait a minute. Say say that again. So. There are three operations. And when an image comes, uh, when an image is uh, entered into the data flow, uh, th those three operations will extract features, and all those feature vectors will be combined into a one single feature vector. So you want them to be combined into a single feature ve vector, or are you you? they're going to be like if they uh, uh, they this is the only way i have come up with for right uh, for now like like they should be converted into a single feature vector okay. and then how what you said like we can explode them into so like 100 the length of feature vectors into those number of features yeah. before feeding okay so Can you give me an example of what these operations are? Uh, like uh, never... one operation would be like uh, texture, detecting texture. The detecting second operation. Okay. And the second operation would be like uh, something like histograms, like okay. uh, detecting colors. And the third would be like detecting the shape, texture and shape. Okay, so I would sort of, I mean, and I think, um, so we've got a lot of other people on here that, that would, that 
that have some machine learning experience here, but I think the way that I might approach this is to split those. So say, you know, obviously we have the issue with the scikit model, but um, so say for example, you're using the TensorFlow model, I would have those each be their own input feature. Um, I feel like that might give you the greatest success here. Um, because if you each give them, uh, you know, assign them as their own input feature, you know, TensorFlow would treat them as, you know, each like a matrix value and, you know, it would know, it would, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what it does internally, but, you know, it, it still gives it some sort of like, you know, these are all correlated. Um, like those values are, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I think, it, it, you know, everything just goes into a matrix, right? So, um, uh, well, at least for a neural network, and it becomes like, you know, essentially a giant matrix multiplier, right? So it's like you could flatten it out and you could, you know, sort of basically, you know, like like put them into in by, you know, making them one big feature. And you're probably going to get the same, I think you're probably going to end up with the same results either way at this point, right? Like, what do you guys think? I mean, come on, shoot, yes. Um, Do we still have? No. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not pretty sure. Uh, how I'm not exactly out, but... sure about how what it means to combine those features. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when you say Are combine, we talking the... about stacking feature vectors, or like, yeah, what do you mean by combining? Is it like stacking feature vectors? Yeah, like stack them together into a single long array. Yeah. Uh, like, I was uh, thinking uh, in context uh, with scikit models. So yeah, Agen, what were you saying? Like, uh, if we have another operation, which like are these features fixed? Uh, if we have another operation to just collect these features and just stack, does that work? I mean, I think that's sort of the open issue here, right? So I think, I think, I think we might be we might be a little too in the weeds on this. I think we kind of just need to try it, right? So I think you need to basically just, you know, what you can do is you can you can have them each be their own. I think that the the main thing here is that we need to fix if you're using the scikit stuff and we're using arrays, right? Then we need to fix that, um, and then you just sort of need to try it and say, okay, you can split them into their own. The thing is, Scikit's going to split them, you know, if we do that, that what we just talked about, right, and we split them each into their own feature, um, then you're going to end up with, um, you're going to end up with, um, you know, essentially a bunch of columns, right, like input, well, like, so if you're looking at it, you know, if you looked at this, like you had some sort of input, you know, like a CSV file, right? And each one, each value for the column was, you know, say it was like the normalized images, right? And, and so all of these were values between zero and one, right? You're just going to have like a million columns, you know, or let's see, like, you know, whatever, if you're six, your, your pixels, it's like 28 times 28 is like 760 something, right? So say you have 760, um, uh, pixels, right? Zero through one values. Um, and now you've done, um, well, I guess is there, we'll just do zero through 255 values, right? And you have 760 of them. And now you're going to run each of these operations on them. So you're going to end up with like, you know, 760 times three, zero through 255 values. And at the end of the day, like scikit, as far as scikit's concerned, like if we do this thing where we split it out, it's just going to treat them each like their own. Um, oh, let's see what. Uh, it's going to treat them each as if they're their own. Um, what is it in X data right now? You know, when we pass the first, the yeah. first parameter to fit is basically just like an array of arrays, right? So it's just going to have more arrays in it, no matter what you do here. Yeah. I understand now. Yeah. I'll just get started on it and okay. see how it goes. Cool, cool. Yeah, awesome. All right, so, and then directory source. You have sent the link on the Gitter chat. I have not oh, opened yes. the full request yet. 
Okay, cool. Um, is there anything you wanted to sort of talk about specifically there, or just like it's coming? Uh, yeah, I've left some comments there. If you can just take a look. Hello, oh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, You're back on comments. And uh, and the uh, what I said before about the config loading stuff was not related to the config loaders directly, uh -huh. but but how we're dealing with them in the CSV source. Ah, uh, okay. Like um, in CSV source, like uh, instead of updating the value for the image column only, it was updating all the columns. Like if we have extra columns there, uh -huh. it was updating all the columns with the same ar array. Oh, so not good. I've, yeah, I've corrected that. So uh, should I make a new pull request or push that in the pre-process? Uh, uh, make the a image new pull request, yeah. Okay. Let's see. And if you could also make an issue so that we know that that happened, um, that would be good. Yeah, I'll make an issue to drive okay. that, okay. 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 Great. Is there anything else on your end, Sakshan? Uh, yeah, just the video. Oh, yes, that's the video. Fine. Yes. Okay, let's see where that's at. Okay, hopefully that's coming soon here. I needed to install FFmpeg, which is apparently still installing. Um, so let's see. SQLite insertion via automating classification data flow. Okay, so an Augen, basically, this is the one we had this working at some point. It sounds like it's not working right now. Right. I'm sorry. So this is that you know didn't we have this working at one point, but it's not working right now. Uh, earlier, just... the issue was the data flow after exporting and re-importing it; it wasn't working. Mm -hmm. Now we fixed that, uh, and now I can't get the model prediction to get inserted to the database. And I think it's mostly because I don't understand origins and flows properly, and, and it might be some small issue okay okay yeah so the other thing is that you know i was looking at this and um it's a bit of a complex flow for a demo here um and i think that has to do especially yeah, with the yeah, conditionals right <laughs> yeah so or the way that we were building the input values i think for the sql operations um so i was kind of almost leaning towards maybe just using um you know, maybe just writing a operation as a function um, and putting that in a file kind of like we did with the FFmpeg ones and just saying like, this is the data flow, you know, like, you know, it's basically just like a single shot operation here. Um, and then we can, you know, just call await train and then, um, you know, do a little SQL query insert because people are going to be more familiar with that. Um, and at this point, operation. yeah, like because at this yeah, everything just as a Python function, right? Because then people, I mean, this yeah, is going to be, that's going to be easier for people to understand the the, the heavy lift yeah, in this, this tutorial. Like complicated, yeah. yeah, we can't make it complicated, right? And so the heavy lift into this tutorial is we sort of, we gloss over how we do the Git operations pretty much. Um, but the point is sort of you can gather operate, you know, you can gather data. And then the other point should be you can, you know, then you, then you can, you know, get that data through some machine learning and into your, your yeah. database, right? And we don't, I think we do yeah. too much, um, like, we if we do too much there, we risk making it too confusing, right? And it's already kind of confusing. Is. So yeah. Yeah. I think that's the way to like go the on. the redirecting flow part is confusing. For yeah, the yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the thing where it's like, you know, the, the data flow stuff can be very, like, especially when you look at that Git operations flow and you're like, you know, collecting all that data like that, that's, that's where it's very useful, but it's also not entirely straightforward. That's for sure. Um, yeah. because you have to like think, you have to think differently. Um, and that doesn't make for fun sometimes. Um, so let's see. So, uh, let's, so make that a, let's scrap the flow and make it so that we and you can basically just call like um, 
um, you know, you can you can instantiate a database, right? Like you have the SQLite database objects, you can instantiate mm -hmm. a database and and you know, call you know just call dot uh, dot update, right? Um, Oh, wait, we, uh, we need to config for the database, right? Um, yeah. Um, well, let's see. So, where are we at with this? Um, like, uh, what are we going to like, include in this one file? So, oops. Um, let's see, what is the flow that you have right now? What is this? What was this stuff? Yeah, uh, that's uh, what I pushed. Like, uh, so, uh, like when it was reading the inputs, it was not converting the inner configs properly. So I want to check with you oh. if this is the correct way to do it. Um, also, uh, what is config loadable? Uh, config loadable is a base class. Wait, what do you mean config config loadable? Yeah, I, like I. I swear oh, this is I'm something that yeah. Loadable. So Sakshan recently added this. Um. Uh, why did we add this? Do you remember? To to load to load using uh, files. Oh yeah, so it would use a config loader to replace, but we—I don't think we got to it yet. Um, to, yeah, we didn't actually implement it within here. We basically, if you mark it, then you're going to load it as a file rather than instantiating the class. Um, so, um, okay. Um, type class. I mean, without this, the features and the data flow was not getting converted. Yeah. Like the data flow inside the run data flow config. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you found you found this one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's been a while since I remember hitting this one. Um, yeah, I thought the problem was with export, but I think it's... With yeah, it's with the import. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um... Yeah, I think this is correct. Um, I think this is correct here. Um, let's see. From dict. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Okay, I believe that's correct, yeah. Um, ah, good, good catch there. Um, okay, and this was. Didn't we? I don't think we need this anymore, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, we don't. Okay. We don't need that. <coughs> um. Mm, I assume we don't need this anymore. Uh, or wait, um, wait a minute. Yeah, where'd that temp bar come from? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Huh, weird. We must have missed that at some point. Um, dtype stir feature dot config dtype. Shouldn't this... Shouldn't this have gotten... Yeah, this should have came in here. Uh, when we did this, I believe... Because if... Kdorg's D type is stir, then. Uh, what if, like, uh, the name doesn't have two columns inside? Oh, yeah. So. Oh, temp bar so should have been. Uh, oh, I contract. see. Yeah, so it should have been um, D type. This should be D type, is just what this should be. Because, you know. Um, D type equals convert D type. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yes, That's what yeah, happened. That's how we yes, yes, we must yes. have messed that up at some point. Um, I mean that could be a separate PR, but um, uh, so let's 
let's see. Yeah, okay, we must have missed that when we did that features thing. Now this next release is going to be huge. i got to do all the compliance tasks. I, I attracted a bunch of attention um, recently, so I really have to do all the compliance tasks um, quickly because um, the there was like this person who's like some senior management person had this webcast last week and they said tell me and my manager if you guys have ideas that are in basically the space that dffml is in and i was like well, not only do i have an idea we have a project um and we've got like you know a nice open source community so you know you should come check this thing out and now i'm um, like my whole chain of management is like john what did you do um so <laughs> Yeah, they're like, where is this thing? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, okay. Like, luckily, I've I have a I've got the the Dal for Pi guys. I've been talking to them, and then I was talking to the people over there's this EdgeX project. They want to use this for basically the automated classification demo. They want to do the same thing. Um, so now there's multiple people within Intel that actually know what's going on. So that's good. Um, let's see. Yeah, that was the other issue. Like. Uh, and we renamed SLC URL to key. Yeah. It wasn't in backticks. Uh oh, yeah, that's uh oh. Um yeah, no wonder that demo was broken. Um <laughs> let's see. Yeah, that was the whole Yeah, okay. So and then make prediction data. Okay, so this is what we're talking about here. Um so this is gonna copy the file name and not the whole contents. Okay, so I mean, what we're doing here is basically connect a database. Um, so MySQL database, and then model predict, and then insert. I mean, that's all this is, right? So, or well, where's the inputs coming from? Oh, the inputs come from the command line. That's right. Um, uh, you pass in a URL, the subflow output all the works and counts, and you pass that to your model and predict, and then you insert into your database. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see. So, like now, uh, like this flow outputs the model predictions, but I can't seem to figure out, like, to create. Uh, you have to have your data in proper format, right? Yeah. In a dictionary data key is your name, so you can pass it to, to the SQL log. So I can't figure yeah, out how yeah. to create that. Let's see. Yeah, we had something where. Also, we're I don't understand origin and flow property. Like, how do you do that? Oh, yeah. Anymore? So, I mean, it's basically mapping. Oh, okay. I think this is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so it's the operation name that you want. It's it's a the list notation comes from the fact of like the way that this gets defined as YAML. Um, I don't know if we really uh, still. Yeah, we had to do this because if you put seed, then seed ends up being the, a string, which is the only entry in the list. That's why it had to be like that. Um, so it's basically a list of you know places it can come from, and so you could say you know like create it can come from, and each each entry is an object where it's a key value mapping of what's the um, what's the operation name and then operation instance name and then what's the output. That it's allowed to come from and so uh you know so this one says that the data input of the db query insert is allowed to come from the create insert data mapping um so do they have to be of the same definition um no you can override that's basically no. it allows you to override so if you if the definition isn't the same this is what's allowing you to override because when you do when you when it creates the auto flow aha this is what happens. Um, you did auto flow, which means it's going to wipe out all of this stuff. Um, so that's what happened there. Um, so basically, yeah, if you it's call auto flow, it's going to wipe out everything and it's going to rebuild dot flow. Um, uh, so okay. that's, that's what happened. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, if you get rid of that, <laughs> okay. it may just actually work. Um, but I don't okay, know. Okay. Let's see, because yeah, basically create insert data. You probably need this one still here. Um, yeah, yes, okay, okay, stuff makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. So basically, because yeah, when you do auto flow, that's just saying okay, 
create the flow based on the definitions, right? And when you modify flow, okay, okay, okay. yeah. And oh, when you call that, update, oh, okay, okay, yeah. yeah oh, when you call update, it updates the. This is so. The thing was, I couldn't figure out how to hook in. Um, so when you call, um, maybe we should make it a context manager actually. Um, but when you call, um, when you modify dot flow, there's that whole by origin structure. Um, and maybe we should just be calling dot update um, right right before we enter the data flow. Actually, that's what we should do. Um, so when you call dot update, it updates the by origin structure within the data flow to figure out. It, it basically is a shorthand so that we don't have to calculate all of like where things are coming from when we're in the when we're in the the main loop there. Um, so yeah, so basically that's what we end up calling update. But we can actually we probably want to remove this dot update call and have it be um, we, we have to call this right now but it's not intuitive you know like it's basically the rule is if you modify dot flow you have to call update um, but we should probably just have it be like you know when we instantiate the data flow or when we, when we pass it to run um, page issue create uh, or let me just do it um, all right so I guess does that do you want to mess with it and then or well let's see um, because yeah I will definitely try to get this thing working because I mean I spend enough time I yeah <laughs> right it would be cool if it works yeah. yeah I mean I think this should be the it yeah. like this should be all you need at this point and then like visualizing it is pretty cool because it shows you how you know the key ends up in that mapping right um, yes, yes. so let's just do also uh, another doubt. Uh, so uh, you you can name like those two like uh, when you specify seed you put origin equal to some name and in the flow you specify where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So uh, if that's say of definition mapping, does it go to all operations which are expecting the mapping definition, or does it just go to where we specify? Sorry, I missed some of what you said there. Yeah. Uh, so uh, can you scroll up? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so here I uh, key equal to C dot main date. Yeah, uh, so uh, when you are specifying the input oh, yeah. for the value main date, yeah. So uh, we specify the origin as C equal to dot main date, right? Mm -hmm. So now does this input go to any definition which is expecting uh, any operation which is expecting this definition, or does it only go to something which we specified? It only goes to something which you specified as going to. So basically, so C dot maintained, right? So here we put in, um, because there's two, yeah, there's two create. mappings that we create, right? The key value and the mapping value. And then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes so, sense. yeah. So the, um, and it might've been more straightforward if we had assigned a, a origin to this one too. Um, but basically, uh, it's, we had a sign, but I didn't know how it oh, okay. was working. So yeah, so that. basically the reason why is because um, uh, if you were to look at the, like the, so basically the default origin for everything is seed, right? Um, and so if I had two, and, and the default input flow always is just an, an array of one that is seed, right? Um, and so basically if I have any definition that matches that from, you know, so if I didn't put an origin here, then it would, the default would be seed, right? And both of these definitions are the same. So, which means that if we didn't modify the flow and we didn't modify the origins, then, you know, maintained and key would be both valid, you know, permutations okay. that it should do, okay. right? Um, and so, therefore, we need to say specifically, hey, I need you to get this from seed.maintained. There was an idea okay, that okay. I'd had a while ago to do, like, target, um, and then basically say, you know, like, this input is specifically for this um, operation, but um, this sort of has the same effect. Um, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it requires a little more linkage in this way, but it also fits with the rest of sort of the, the paradigm that we already do so yeah um okay, yeah it, it should you you will end up with a really pretty diagram that's for sure it's gonna be great yeah i, I um, know how to do this thing now yeah, yeah. okay cool I, yeah. 
Okay. All right, so let's see. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Um, we're going to need, this is part of the stuff that we need to write down about that data flow documentation, the new page that we created. All right, so. Um, yeah, we have in return stuff about those. Oops, wrong bullet point. So, actually, this is good. This is good um, discussion. This, we have this recording now, so let's see. Uh, and uh, meeting, recording, talk about seed. Yeah, we talked about flow and seed. Uh, oh, we have that. Meeting. Yeah, we have that. I've. Uh, okay. Yeah, I that's right. Know. I remember. It's, it should be up here in the notes. Thank you for reminding me. It's around 15 May, I think. Okay, let's see. Or 12th May. Oh, yeah, here, so May 12th. Thank you. Oh, God, that was a while ago. I still haven't done that. Damn it. Um, you have a lot of videos to edit. Yeah, yeah right. Um, and is this? Oh my God! This is Windows. Just, just, just install FFmpeg. It's been doing this for like all day. Um, it's good stuff to add to um, videos. We talked about making um, C meeting. That's from. May twelfth, twenty twenty. Thanks. All right. Um, cool. I think we're good for the day then. Um, we definitely went over on time. Sorry about that. There was a bunch of, a bunch of stuff was confusing. No, it's always hard. We maybe should do. I don't know if we should do another meeting. What do you guys think? Should we space this out more? Um, I think we'll still on the floor. Hmm. All right. We'll uh, keep, what do you mean? I just mean like, if we do another meeting, then we can have more. You know, then you know, sometimes then if there's multiple times you can join, then you don't have to join every time, right? So, um, then uh, you know, maybe I, we end up with more spaced out, and we don't end up going for, um, you know, like two and a half hours. We can do that conditionally. Like if if one week is very much packed, then we yeah. can share another about... one. Not every week. Yeah, so how about we actually go through and the night before everybody sends out what they want to talk about um, and that way we'll know, you know, we'll know relatively how much time um, we're getting, right? So then if we, um, if we get to the end of the hour and we haven't, yeah, like maybe, maybe at the beginning of the week, like everybody send out stuff that they know that they want to talk about and... Um, I'll try to come up with some kind of formula for this, and then basically we can know ahead of time how long we're going to be in here. So, because I, me I meant to do a break, um, so that we could all have a break here, but I, s I forgot about that. Uh, I'm so sorry about that. Um, so let's see. Um, need better way to organize meeting. We keep running long and here i am running long as we do this all right okay let's let's convene all right have a good night everyone um and i'll uh talk to you guys later and uh see you know get her and everything right. thanks bye thank you Bye.